All right. We're getting to uh, what looks like close to the end of building this uh, little grocery list app. Uh, today, we will be connecting this to uh, an API so that the data is persistent on a server somewhere. Um, you know, you can have multiple devices, uh, you know, connected to it and be able to keep it in sync. For instance, if you have a partner and want to go shopping together. Um, now, I've built a fairly straightforward uh, Python-based API, which um, which I have also actually recorded uh, separately as kind of a, a different tutorial. Um, it's a little bit out of the scope of this series uh, because it's not Flutter, it's not Dart, it's Python and Fast API. Um, but I will uh, eventually put it up and, and write a link to that one and kind of connect the dots between the two uh, in case you are interested. Um, so, just as a review, we you know we have this uh, grocery list thing uh, right now. All of our data is coming from uh, initial data comes from this mock here, uh, which is uh, you know kind of like an API. Um, but anytime we restart, we lose you know any changes that uh, that are lost in memory. Uh, for instance, if I add something called um, garbage bags, and maybe that's part of a household, and click save, you know, it's here. We can still mark it as done, all that fun stuff, but if I actually do a refresh of the app, you'll see it's going to be gone. So let's work, up, let's, let's work with connecting this to our API. Um, I have uh, my project open here, and um, it is running on my local host. So I'll just give you a quick tour um, from the API side of it, uh, localhost 8000. Uh, now, Fast API is really cool because if you do it properly, you actually get these sort of like built-in docs slash um, an actual testing suite. So you can play around with it. Uh, if you've ever used Postman before, um, this is kind of can replace that. Uh, you don't really need to use Postman because it automatically builds the Postman part for you. Super handy. Uh, so for instance, uh, so I've set up um, a few API endpoints here, all based on items. Now there's nothing for users, nothing for authentication. Uh, I'm keeping this super, super basic. Uh, you know, if, this would be something that uh, if we wanted to actually release this app, we'd obviously have to um, kind of like sandbox everyone's items into a particular owner and deal with authentication. Otherwise we're all sharing the same grocery list. Uh, but for the purposes of now, this is totally fine. So in my, um, uh, one of the endpoints is just a get on items, and we can actually test that out just by going try out. Uh, there's no parameters. Uh, there's nothing for pagination. Um, it, we're just going to get everything. And if you execute, you'll actually see, okay, here's what's coming back. <clears throat> so very much like uh, what we have right here, uh, just less things. And in fact, two are the same, and that's just uh, because I made two that are the same. So we have the get. Uh, that's obviously what's going to replace, you know, getting this initial data at first. Oops. Uh, then we have uh, creating an item. So creating an item, essentially, we hit the item, the same URL, but posting instead of list, uh, instead of getting, and we can try it out as well. So we can, uh, and it gives you all the, you know, what you need to actually pass up. So for instance, we need a name, and let's add in, let's do grocery bags, as we um, said before. This will be part of household and purchased will be false. And I'm going to execute that. Uh, and you'll see what actually happens. It, does, it shows you kind of like the example of the curl code that would happen. We won't be using curl, but uh, curl is nice because it does really show you everything that, uh, that is happening to the server, hitting this URL. Um, and it gives you a response back. It actually just gives you that object. And the reason that's really good is, you know, our server might normalize, it might do something like, um, you know, maybe it makes everything uppercase. Uh, so we get an instance of exactly how it is. Uh, but most importantly, we get an ID back. And this is going to be really important when we want to um, delete something or update it. We need to know what database record it corresponds with. So that's our response. All right. Now there's a few more. Um, we have something for just getting a specific item. I don't think we're even going to have a need for it, but it's pretty, you know, normal to have in an API. Um, then, there's, uh, then there's put. Uh, so all these, the rest of them all, uh, you know, the first two are just items and then it's items slash ID. This is a placeholder, meaning you're going to pass up one, two, three, four, or whatever the ID is. Um, so we can get it, we can put, put is kind of like a way to update an existing one. Um, so this works a lot like post, uh, create, except we actually have the slash ID 
So um, if we were to try this out, and let's use ID one, because uh, we had two milks, um, and let's actually name this um, almond milk. You know, maybe we made a mistake, and it's still going to be part of dairy, and purchase is false. So there we get back, and you see it's ID one because we were updating the one that was one. And if we were to go back here and actually read the items, you're actually going to see almond milk, then the milk that we had before, then then grocery bags. So that's that. Um, we also have delete, uh, which works just like the put, except we don't actually pass up any data. You just pass the ID, and it will delete it. Um, now, for if we want to actually handle these checkboxes, we could, of course, just put uh, the same thing up and change purchased to true or false. But I created sort of a helper endpoint where all you do is post uh, with the word purchase after, and it will actually then um, purchase it. So in this case, let's try it out. Let's purchase number one. Uh, first of all, let's just make sure number one wasn't purchased already. Nope, it's false. So let's purchase number one. Um, and I click execute. And we get back the same, you know, the, the object as it is in memory, but you'll see purchase is true. And if we come back here and execute, purchase is, uh, purchase is true, purchase is true, purchase is false. I guess that one was already true. Okay, awesome. Um, and then there's unpurchase. Uh, just, that's basically like, un, you know, unchecking something, which uh, could be because you made a mistake uh, or it could be because, um, you know, you're, you're not grocery shopping now, you're back at the fridge and you realize, oh, I'm out of milk. I don't want to go you know, and delete milk and recreate a new one. I just want to mark it. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing um, over the next, uh, uh, this video. And, you know, there quite possibly could be another, depending on how, how long this takes to integrate. So let's get right into it. Um, we'll still have the, uh, this, this Chrome tab up for reference um, of our API and also be able to test things out when something goes wrong. But uh, for the most part, we'll be working in the dark code for the remainder. Okay, so let's start with, uh, I mean, makes sense to start with the listing because uh, we can't really do anything unless we have real real lists. So uh, first of all, let's uh, let's just empty this. Uh, no, we'll keep it here, it's fine. Um, let's go to our grocery, so we have a service, grocery item service. And um, so right now what we're doing is we're getting those grocery items from this mock and we are doing a delay and that's so that we can kind of um, imitate the idea of, hey, there's something happening. Um, let's uh, you know, let's, let's wait uh, one second. In this case, a thousand milliseconds, and then we get that data back. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we actually have to make a post uh, or a get request to that endpoint. Uh, so what I want to do first, we could use the HTTP library that uh, that is kind of like the official Flutter one. Uh, but recently, I, I tried using Do, and um, I like it. I mean, at least just as much. So I think we should just use that. So we're going to do Flutter. Uh, pub add do and just for some reference flutter do there we go uh, so yeah do is a powerful http client for dart which supports interceptors global configuration form data request cancellation file downloading timeout etc so uh, i think it's I haven't used this any, you know, much more than uh, to do very basic stuff with, um, but I imagine it has some advantages over HTTP, hence why it exists. Um, so this is what we're just going to use. Uh, if you do prefer to use the HTTP library, the code we're doing now is going to be 99% the same as the the uh, the more um, not built in but st uh, standard HTTP library. So we got Do, um, which it also added in our pub uh, HTTP parser in our in our pub lock there because it is a dependency of that. Okay, so what we can do is um, let's look at the README here. Uh, so we should have do in there now, and then uh, we have this. Now, what I like to do because uh, we may now in this case in this app it probably doesn't matter because um, we really only have one service. Uh, but I do like to make uh, sort of like a base API service, and we'll just call it API underscore service and class api service and this is where we would kind of do all of our root stuff like making our you know doing our gets doing our all that kind of stuff um and then uh, inherit it so let's let's import do and we can just do that with this there we go and let's uh let us create that um that function or the get function uh so i'm kind of uh yeah i just want to kind of create a uh um a very simple function uh, that we can reuse for many things. And it's going to be future. We're going to basically be returning a future in it because it has to call an API. 
So it's async, and it's going to return uh, anytime we call it. It's going to be a uh, going to returning a map with a string of dynamic. Uh, sorry, with a string key and dynamic um, value, and we're just going to call it get. Now this will turn blue because get's kind of like a reserved word in in Dart, but it doesn't actually matter because uh, in, unless we're actually putting it right here as a uh, you know get, oops, get something, it won't be treated as a as a get. So we're just going to call it get, and we're going to anytime we um, we call this, we're going to pass in a path. Uh, this isn't necessarily URL. This would be um, a path based on our root API URL. That way, uh, if we have multiple environments, you know, a production and a staging environment, we can very easily um, just change it to one spot and not have to go through all our code and, and, and change the URL. So it's just the path. Um, and then optionally, and we can use square brackets for that, uh, we are also going to allow um, some par par parameters to be passed in. And that's going to be a map type um, string dynamic as well. And uh, the default, we'll set a default, and it's just going to be um, this. Now, when you're setting a default of a list um, of a map, you have to use const. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I've just learned that you have to do that. OK, so this function will be asynchronous. So that's our declaration for our function. And that is good. Now, there's a couple um, helpers I want to make here. Um, Essentially, uh, not, not quite. Oh, yeah, some, some helpers, some whatever. First of all, I want to make a constant, and this is going to be called API base URL. Um, and this, for now, will just be HTTP colon slash slash local host 8000, uh, which is um, where this is, you know, where this API is actually hosted. Uh, when we go to production, we would do that differently. We'd probably want to use some uh, Dart ENV sort of setup so we can easily switch between them, but this is totally fine. Okay, uh, so I want that. Um, now, um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now, something else that I like to put in my API service is a way to, uh, cause when you're doing get requests, um, essentially the way, uh, if you want to pass parameters up, you might, you know, you'll have like, you'll have a string that's something like, um, HTTP, whatever domain.com. And if you wanted to pass some parameters in a get, you actually have to kind of use like a question mark and say foo equals bar. And then you have to use an ampersand to say uh, test equals one, um, all that fun sort of stuff, uh, which is, you know, we as programmers um, would want, would rather just pass up sort of like an object of, uh, you know, instead of doing that, you'd have something like foo equals one bar equals whatever uh, and pass that up. So I'm gonna create this sort of helper function um, here and it's going to return a string for us. And I'm going to call it um, params to query string. And we would be passing in a map with a string and dynamic, similar uh, to all the other things called params. Um, and we'll do that. And what we can kind of do is loop through all those parameters and, um, and set them um, as strings because the way do at least works uh, all your uh, or the way the way the way i want to do this every every parameter has to be a string because it has to kind of be part of this um so we're going to loop through that so we're just going to go par params dot entries because it's a map dot for each uh, then we have an element in there and i'm going to create a variable actually i need to create it out here sorry it's kind of like our temporary parameter variable and it's going to be equal to this um, and we'll just, just so we know what it is, it is a map string. And in this case, string, the idea is we want to, when we return from this, we want to fully have, um, um, we want to have this as a string. So params equal this. And every time we're going through, we're going to take whatever the params is set to right now, uh, cause this is a loop. And then we're going to take, uh, and add in the element dot key. So that's the key of this thing. Uh, you know, the foo. Uh, and then it's going to be set to, and I'm just going to um, put this in strings and do this so we can go element dot value. Uh, and sometimes Dart erases, VS Code erases my things. And we'll close that. Uh, oh, wait, something's messed up here. That should be there. That should be there. And then that should be there. Okay. And that we can close. That we can do this. Um, Okay, so that will essentially, all this is doing is normalizing all the values that could be, that are dynamic. So they might be, you know, numbers, they could be Booleans, and it will uh, change it to a, to a string. Um, 
Then what we actually want to make this a full on string is uh, there's a few ways you could do this, but I actually just like using the URI, uh, which is part of um, where is this coming from? Uh, yeah, what is I think it uh, yeah, what does URI come from? URI, um, I think, it, oh, it's just built in like Flutter, Flutter guy. Um, so we have that and we're gonna pass in those params that we've kind of like made. And then we're gonna go dot query, dot query, I believe. So we're returning that. Uh, and that will, that'll take, um, that basically builds a URI object like a you you know like a, a a url has many things you know it has like a protocol it has the domain it has the path um and this is basically when we construct it by passing in these parameters and then we say dot query we're basically taking this part of the url uh which is exactly what we want here uh, so it'll handle you know putting the question mark the first time and ampersands thereafter um you know there's other ways we could do this for sure but i like this way okay so that's a nice helper to have because in our get function, um, we're gonna make a value called query. Uh, and we're gonna take that params to query string and pass in the params that we have here, which by default will be this, which means the string will be empty when it comes back, but that's totally fine. We also wanna create a URL and that's gonna be equal to a string of, and we're gonna take our API base URL um, and then we're going to right after that do the path which is this path right here. And then we're going to put in question mark uh, query. There we go. Then we need to actually call, um, call this. And if we go back to our thing here to call it, uh, we would create, we would basically take this right here. Uh, and I'm just gonna make a final, it doesn't have to be a var. And we wanna actually do uh, wait do.get you are url and we want to return not the response but the response dot data which is the data in the response so let's just clean some stuff up here putting some uh some commas so there we have our we have our get um oh this is telling me we don't need these because it's just one variable so let's do that um we'll come back in the future and add we're going to add like post and put and update and delete and all those lovely things and maybe some other you know some other sweet helpers but uh, this is good enough for us to get started. So let's go back to our grocery item service. And now what we're gonna do, uh, this is just a class on its own, uh, but we're gonna extend the API service. Um, oops, extends, plural that. Uh, and what extending does um, is now this class is a subclass of API service, meaning any public functions we've created here. So anything that doesn't use an underscore that's part of the class, we have access to here, meaning we can actually go, instead of doing this future, um, we can go uh, final data. So we're basically gonna be getting rid of both of these things here, which I'll just comment out for now for reference. And that's gonna be equal to this.get, and that's our that's referring to this get here. And what do we have to pass in? Well, we have to pass in a path. And in this case, the path is, according to our API docs, items. All right. Um, and yeah, I'm seeing this area here and it's because we have to await this response because it doesn't, uh, it is, uh, doesn't like us, um, without doing that. So let's just, uh, before we fix the stuff, it's, you know, that we're basically have some weird issues here. Let's print data. Um, and let's just return, uh, cause this has to return a list of stuff. We can just return an empty list, uh, just so it doesn't get mad at us. So we'll refresh here. Oh, uh, okay, let's, sorry, let's just comment that out too. Did not like us. So this should be empty now because we're not getting anything. And oh, we're actually getting an error here. Um, do, 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 do. We will figure that out. Let's go, uh, so something that's built into the VS Code Dart, um, VS Code Dart package is you can go Command Shift P and type network, Dart Open DevTools Network page. Uh, now we'll refresh once this is ready. And this will show us all of our network calls happening, which, which can be helpful. Um, so we see that it's doing a get to, uh, and it's a little bit, you kind of have to, there we go. 
uh, get to localhost 8000 slash items slash and then there's uh there seems to be a double slash there and that's because i have an extra slash uh oh right because we are actually putting in um the slash here so let's just get rid of that slash at the end and let's refresh okay so we still have a we still have an issue but uh let's just see everything oh this is the old one uh i don't oh here's the new one maybe let's see response not found awesome um it's probably because i wonder if uh the question let, let's just uh let's look at what the url is oh wait there's still two slashes here i think uh let's clear this out let's do a refresh again and uh it would be this one here okay this one's not doing HTTP localhost 8,000 items, and there's a question mark, and I'm getting, oh, I am getting stuff back. Awesome. Um, okay, okay. Very good, very good. Uh, so we are getting items back. Um, one issue here is uh, my API, the way I built it, um, is it, it's returning a list, not a, um, not a, um, what do you call it, uh, a map. So I wonder, um, so that error is happening in our API service. So right here, it's basically returning response that data. Um, a couple ways we could easily fix this. Uh, we could just say, go data and go like this, or in fact, Let's make it say results, because we might also want to send back, you know, stuff um, like the status code or whatever. Now, I'd probably realistically make this change in my API, where we are always not just returning an array, but returning re returning an object that has stuff like this. But um, I don't really want to play around with my API right now. Um, there we go. Okay, so it's kind of working. We're at least not getting errors now, um, but nothing's showing up. And that is because, remember, we were like, oh, it's, you know, we're just returning out of here. So let's fix this stuff up. So we'll put these guys back in. And what we're doing is we're doing data.map. Now, we actually want to now be going data results.map. And everything looks good there. And let's just refresh. And there we go. That's pretty sweet that that just kind of worked with a little bit of just a little bit of fuss um so we're hitting that endpoint we're getting back this data and we are returning it um and it's nice because we built you know this whole code base knowing there'd eventually be an api so we created a service we you know did these sort of like things in advance so we're not we're kind of just hopefully just going to be able to just update stuff in this roughly in in this one file and, and be able to do some stuff so that's good uh and if we go refresh it uh I don't know if our refresh actually is, let, let's make our refresh work again. Um, so I think that's in our list screen. I'm gonna get rid of the network tab for now. It takes up a lot of room, especially when I'm zoomed. Uh, list, okay, let's go to list screen. I believe it's actually gonna be part of the grocery list. This is where our refresh, okay, sweet. So we have refresh data and when does that get called? That calls on refresh. Um, so what we should be able to do here is list provider dot um, and where what's in our list provider here. Let's go see um, items. So we were on our list provider. We were just automatically being like, let's go get the items. But we should actually uh, create a let's just start it with a private function called um, fetch items. And it's async and basically all the code that we had here i'm going to move to here um, and let's actually just make it a public function uh, and then in init we're going to say fetch items this dot fetch items just so it actually happens at first now we do need to um, make this something that we can do and it is not going to take any any variables, any parameters. Uh, meaning now that this is public, it's it's here, it doesn't have an underscore. And if we save, we can go here and go list provider.fetch items. 
and we can just await this in case we wanted to. Um, oh, oops, right, right, right. Uh, one mistake. This is not a void. This is a future void. So we'll we'll wait here. It doesn't actually matter in this case, but if we wanted to show something, um, you know, some kind of progress or whatever, we could do something here and then await and then do something after. So if we do this now, um, we'll refresh and let's just uh, let's just see if it's we'll open our network thing and see if it's actually making a network call when we do this. It is. There we go, there we go. So that's working. Uh, like I said, we could do something where we show like a loading thing, but um, I think this is totally fine for now. Okay, so we have getting items. Let's get rid of our mock now. We no longer need that. And let's uh, let's fully get rid of it. Mock, go shoot item mock. Um, we can. We should just be able to delete this, this whole folder. And uh, cause I don't think anything else is accessing that. Let's do a refresh and see if that broke anything. Nope, we're good. Okay, next is create. So we're going to need to add a post um, function here. Um, the post in some ways is actually simpler because we don't have to worry about doing this params to query string. We can actually just pass data up. So I'm going to I'm gonna just going to copy and paste this to make it easy. Um, and this will be called post. Um, so we're going to pass we're going to still have a path. We're going to still have parameters. Uh, we don't have to worry about this query string anymore. Uh, we'll keep that. Yeah, we'll keep the trailing slash. And um, in our post, we're we are just going to return the response that data because it will it won't be a list. Um, there will uh, yeah that should be that should be totally fine. Uh, post doo -doo -doo -doo, and we want to instead of dot get we want to do dot post. And we need to pass up, I believe, with do. Let's look at their docs. Let's just search for the word post. Post. OK, so what we have to do is we pass in uh, uh, data here. And data will be these parameters here. Now, we can actually just call this data because it's a little bit different. So it could be called params. Doesn't really matter. Um, and that should be good. Okay, so, and it's just gonna return whatever the response.data is, um, and, and we should be in a good spot. So here, we are going to go, instead of this future, we are going to await um, this.post, and we are going to pass up um, the name. Uh, sorry, we're, sorry, first we need the path, and the path will be items, forward slash items. Then we are going to pass up some data, um, which I will just make right here. There will be a name and it will be equal to whatever the name is and there will be a category and it will be equal to um, this category, which because this category is that enum, we have to do that thing. So let's just make a variable for that final category name equals and we can use our grocery item dot category string from category and pass in that category. Um, there we go. Category name. And uh, and then we also just, anytime we're adding anyone, let's just purposely say uh, purchased equals false. And just because this is kind of a long line, let's, um, let's make something final data equals this. And that way we can just pass in data, uh, sorry, post. And then the next thing was data that we want to pass into our, our function. Um, and then I'm actually just going to take this category name variable and, and put it like that. OK, and now that, that should clean some stuff up. Now, um, what we actually want to make is, uh, where is um, final response equals await that. And we're actually going to, this response, uh, actually, it's not really the response. Remember, what we're getting back is the response of data. So let's, let's, uh, let's you know what, just to keep things clean, let's actually call these par params and pass in params. And over here, I'm going to also just make it params, params, just to keep the naming. Because uh, I want this to be data. The data we get back is this. Then 
this data should look something like this. Like it should be, you know, we should be getting back um, a, a, a JSON object. So we should just be able to do this. And uh, we can make this once, you know, one line cleaner just by going return grocery item from JSON data. And we can get rid of this. So let's let's see if that worked. Uh, we're gonna refresh. We're gonna go and add uh, tests. Uh, let's no, let's do something a little bit nicer. What else is at the grocery store? Lemons. All right, see that's part of the produce, and we save. And look, lemons is there now. Um, let's see if that actually you know was actually works. So we're gonna go get items, and we're gonna through our API. And look, lemons is there, and purchase is false. Da -da -da. Amazing. We are we are getting there, um, and if I refresh now, you know, still the same. If we do a refresh of the app, it's there. If I stop the app and build, it's going to be there because it is stored on a server. Okay, uh, what's the next obvious one to do? Um, let's let's do deleting. So we are going to have to uh, go back here, and um, I'm going to copy and paste this and delete. Now delete will. Um, We'll never take any parameters. It's just a path. So we can get rid of that, that, and that, and that, and that. And we can get rid of these guys. And I believe on Dio, it's probably just delete. And uh, we, you know, we'll return the response to that data, but uh, spoiler alert, the, when you delete something in, in the API I built, it's the, the response is basically empty. It's just, it's just gonna be some uh, like empty, empty bra braces. Uh, okay, so we have delete now, um, and we have to go here and actually make the delete. So let's copy, let's copy create again, and let's make one called delete. And delete will take all, um, there's a couple ways we could do this. I want to take the actual uh, grocery item, like when we're doing this grocery item, um, and we'll call it item. And we don't need any of this, because all we're actually gonna do is hit the delete endpoint with items slash whatever the ID of this is, so item.id. Uh, and this has to be because there's a dot, we have to put it like this. And we're not actually going to return that. We are going to just return um, return null. Uh, and in fact, we can just await this. And we can, instead of making this a future grocery item, let's just make a future void. Uh, and this is telling us string cannot be assigned to the parameter grocery item. Wait, what? Uh, oh, okay. Here's, <laughs> yeah, here's a problem here. Um, <laughs> we have sort of a recursive function happening here. Uh, this dot delete, it's going to this delete, not this delete. Um, so either we have to call this like delete item, which I'm just going to do delete item, um, so that they don't conflict. Okay. Now, um, the one thing is, um, because we totally made this, uh, we need to actually call this wherever we are doing this. So this would be in the, I think the grocery item card. Uh, it's wherever we have that swipeable. Yeah, dismissible. So, okay, then we do the remove item in this service here that we have here. And currently our remove item, um, all it was doing was removing it there, which this is still good to have because this means we can kind of fire and forget the API endpoint, meaning like our presentation layer will be like, oh, it's, it's gone. Um, uh, and then when we refresh, it'll be gone for real. So I am going to go um, uh, item service, uh, grocery item service dot delete or dot delete item. And we will pass in the item. Uh, so let's actually do that first. Um, I mean, it doesn't actually matter. We can, let's do it at the end. Uh, all right. So let's see if that even works. Um, I'm just going to refresh, and what we're going to do is do this delete thing here. Boom. Okay, we did get some kind of error, which I'm not surprised about. It should be 307. Uh, so let's let's open up our network page. Let's just refresh. So we we should get that one back because obviously an error happened. Um, and let's try this again and see what happens. So here's our delete function. Whoa. And let's first of all see what we're doing. We're hitting, uh, we're hitting localhost items slash four. Sounds about right. And what's our response? Response is nothing. Um, 
Do error, it should be status error. Let's see, uh, let's test it through through here. So we have delete item slash ID. Uh, so let's just try doing it in here and see if we get the same issue. Successful response. So it sends a 200 back. What's different? The only difference I can see is there's no trailing slash, but, um, and let's, oh, it looks like my, it's possible that the delete function on the server is not actually working. So um, even though I thought it was working, let's, let's see. Uh, let's do our get again. Oh, it is still there, item four. Okay, so we kind of have it working. Um, I'm gonna have to do a fix on the server side to, to, to fix that, but let's just assume it works for, for, the, for the case of now. Uh, there shouldn't be a future change needed to make that work. Okay, so next is um, let's do the let's do the update. Uh, it's the you know it, it'll be fun. Um, so we have uh, how does our update work right now? Add item, set item, remove item, fetch item. Um, let's go to our I think it's the add screen because we did this thing where uh, new item and let's say form provider dot save item. Save item. So in our form provider, we are essentially checking if it is new or not, right? Uh, if it's new, we add item. If not, um, so we're changing it in memory, which is a good practice, but we're not actually going and hitting um, uh, hitting the endpoint to actually update it. So um, let us let us do that. Um, so to say sort of with our same pattern, um, we're going to go like this and I'm writing this code before we actually have the code to do it. Let's do update item and I'm going to, I'm going to basically pass up, um, the ID of that item. So is new grocery item ID. So we should be able to just pass up, uh, this dot grocery item ID and then new grocery item. So that's like the updated version of it. We will then open up our list provider and we need to make that function. So uh, we have, um, let's have one called update item and it's gonna first of all take a int called ID and then a grocery item called item. And we need to create this. Now again, um, because of this abstract class pattern, Dart uh, will be like, hey, we can, we can help you do this. So let's make that override update item. So here, what we would want to do is then um, hit our um, service that we have. So we have that service over here and we need to of course create that. I'm gonna create it here. I feel like it belongs before uh, delete um, and I'm gonna copy the create one because it's kind of similar, kind of not. Um, so let us, first of all, there'll be an int of ID and there will be, a, well, we should name this to update. And I'm gonna call update item. Um, and we are going to then pass in a grocery item called item, grocery item called item. And then basically our parameters are going to be name. And we're gonna take whatever the item dot name is. Um, and then we wanna get, now this one we can actually just go, cause we already have an instance of it. We can go item dot category um, value. That's our little getter that we made that will return that uh, that string version of it. Um, and then purchased, we're just gonna take if the item's purchased or not and either whatever state it is. Um, so we're basically just kind of serializing this right here. Um, now we could make a function on our item called for serializing um, to make this a little bit easier. And, and maybe we'll do that if we notice we're doing this in two spots, but for now this is fine. Uh, so instead of post, we want to actually put Put is another restful um, endpoint. Um, so let's go to our post. It is very, it's kind of a hybrid between two of these. Um, so put, and we will do put. Now the main difference is we also need, and this will be a required field, a uh, int called ID. Um, oh wait, no, we don't actually, sorry, we don't have to do that because uh, we're gonna we're gonna handle that over here. 
So put, we just pass a path up in parameters and it'll it'll just do a put um, request instead of a post. Post is basically like create something new, put is, hey, put this data on something existing. And um, um, where were we? The form provider, we have that grocery list provider. Uh, in our service. Um, so we want to put items slash, and this is where we would pass in that ID. Okay, update item maybe is done. Uh, update item int. Okay, um, right, because int is, although at this point, um, so we know, we know there is an ID here because otherwise is new would be um, would be false, right? We're checking like if it's null. Um, so we know we can just safely put an exclamation mark there and be like, this is not null. So let's just refresh and let's go to our uh, lemons and we'll go edit and let's change it to limes. Now we know this works from a UI point of view, um, which is nice, but let's actually see if it, okay, it looks like it went and went and created a new one. Interesting. Um, so let's just walk through this again. Let's go right from the uh, the ad screen. You might just miss one thing. Okay, so on the save, we go new item equals await form provider dot save item. Save item. Um, do, 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 make sure it's valid. And then is new equals false. If the ID is null, is new is true. And we know this part ran because it did, I believe that part ran, uh, let's edit another one, grocery bags too. So yeah, it says updated. So it's definitely getting into this part. Um, and then update item, let's see what you do. We're just stepping through this whole, oh. <laughs> Interesting. We never even called this. So how, um, how did it even create? Grocery item service dot update item. ID item. I don't actually know what even happened there. How did the create even get called? Update item, update item. Like this never even did anything. Okay, so something weird's going on. We're gonna figure it out. So let's uh, let's edit grocery bags two and make it say grocery bags three. And my guess is that it's going to actually uh, okay. Well, we have something. Okay, um, we're gonna have to open our network for that. Yeah, so it's it seems to be creating and um, it seems to be doing some weird stuff. So let's figure out what's going on. Okay, so let's edit this. Grocery bags four. Okay, so we do a put request to item seven. It sounds about right. What are we actually sending up now? The the inspector doesn't tell you the greatest amount of things. Um, yeah, so now, like it's kind of buggy in my opinion, but we do see that it is at least doing a put to there. And the response back is, I guess, empty. Um, temporary redirect. I wonder if it's because of trailing slashes. Because we are, we are hitting it with this trailing slash, I think in our API console, um, It looks like there's supposed to be a trailing. Oh no, there's, oh. Yeah, I think that could be our problem. This, see how there's no trailing slash after here? I, I'm gonna just make a quick change in um, in the API to make sure that there's always trailing slashes. So I'm in some Python code right now, if you're following along. Uh, I'm just gonna always have a trailing slash and that will just refresh our API. And let's just refresh this to see if, so now these have chilling slashes. That could be the root of some of the weird stuff happening. Uh, Cause basically I think what the API is doing is it's not recognizing it. And then it's doing a uh, redirect to it, which can sometimes mess up things. That might not be the problem at all. It's just worth fixing right now. So let's do grocery, let's change this to five. That is totally what was happening. And that's why there was duplications and maybe, oh, the duplication is still happening. Okay. That's fun. Um, 
Okay, so it seems that anytime, let's do a couple of tests here. Let's just make a totally new thing called bananas. Bananas. And that is obviously produce. And let's just see, bananas get added and they don't get added twice. But as soon as we edit bananas, bananas too, what seems to be happening is it's doing a put and a post. Um, so there's, now in our UI it's fine, but when we refresh, oh, oh, maybe not. No, yeah, there it is. Oh, whoa. So it, it updated the one and then also created another one. So we have some kind of weird um, something in our logic here. So let's continue stepping through. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, this, okay. It's, it makes perfect sense. We're calling the create, I think this was just to like, so that we could kind of like build the UI for this. Uh, we're creating the, um, we're creating it whether or not it's new or not. So really this code should just happen in here. Um, if there is an ID, we do the new. Uh, and that's kind of a problem too, because, um, okay. Like really we only want to, um, no, let, let, let's do, okay, so this, oh, I see, I see. So our add item, does our add item not even do the network call? It doesn't, it doesn't. So I actually kind of, we have sort of a uh, something with our pattern that is not, um, that's a little bit wrong here. I am going to, so this is what we're gonna do. We are gonna do it the way that this has kind of been happening. I'm gonna put this code in here. Uh, we're gonna go back to this update item. Um, we're actually not even gonna have this as part of our service. I'm gonna grab this code here though for the future. Then instead of calling this, we are going to just call the grocery item service directly, update item, and we're gonna pass in this ID and new grocery, uh, not new grocery item, but uh, this dot grocery item. Uh, we're going to await that and it, we're gonna, um, is new, we're gonna have Final, I'm going to call this updated grocery item equals that. And then we can take the name there. Okay. So basically like, uh, we're not, yeah, we're just, we're just updating, um, um, this stuff here. Okay. Let's see if that fixed. Oh, we have another issue. Oh, return. Oh yeah. We want to return the item. Um, Okay, so let's just make let's just make a variable which is going to be of type. Uh, let me just write grocery item, and I'm just going to call it new grocery item as we have here. And instead of saying final here, we're just going to get rid of these finals. We're basically just updating this, um, and this should we're going to call it new grocery item no matter what, and then we can return new grocery item. Okay. So we have a lot of annoying data now in our uh, in our thing, but that's fine because we will be able to eventually delete it. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the delete works now. It could have been to do with that slash. Let's just try deleting one. I got rid of number four. That's uh, still or still there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's try editing bananas two. To call it bananas seven seven seven. Love these names. And then we'll do a refresh. And hopefully now, yeah, we just have bananas seven seven seven. Uh, let's edit a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, so was my, let's, um, let, let's just do something here to clean some stuff up. Uh, this is just running locally. So I actually have this uh, thing called SQL DB. If I just delete it, um, and I think I probably have to restart my server here. And if we refresh our screen, you sh we should have nothing. Um, so we can actually just have a clean, wonderful start here. So let's do bananas. And we will do it as a produce item and we will click save. And then we have this. Awesome. Okay, so let's make a new, new thing called um, 
paper towel, 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 and it will be of type household. Save. And we got that. And let's just edit this to say paper towel two, paper towel two. Awesome. And let's just change this back. Okay, everything is working. This is great. Uh, the last thing ish, other than fixing a delete issue, is making these guys do things. So right now, if I do this and refresh, we're going to see that they they go back, and that's because we haven't made um, anything for this yet. So let's close a bunch of stuff. Let's go to our um, service grocery item service, uh, and let's do something. I think it can. Um, it's going to be similar to delete. So we'll just use delete, uh, but it is going to be a post and we're going to be posting to purchase and we're going to call this purchase, purchase item. And you'll see what the reason that this is happening is, uh, yeah, item slash ID slash purchase and it's a post request and unpurchase item, unpurchase. Okay. So we have those two guys there. And now we just see the way in our, I think it happens in our card. We have this checkbox um, on update group. Yeah, grocery item checkbox. Uh, we actually have our own module just for this. Um, and let's do, um, we can kind of do this after all this stuff because really this will happen in the background. So let's do if widget dot grocery item dot purchased we will say um grocery item service dot purchase item and we will pass in widget dot grocery item else we want to unpurchase uh oops <laughs> i'm doing the wrong spot unpurchase item Boom. Okay, let's see if that works. Refresh, and we'll check our bananas. We will go like this, and it looks like they're still there as, as good. And if we go back, cool. Now remember, we have this feature that will kind of hide anything that is checked, and uh, it seems to, uh, seems to still work. Awesome. Beautiful. All right. Um, so yeah, I have a small, tiny thing to do just to fix that delete thing, but uh, that's kind of out of the scope of this anyways. I believe the dark code is totally fine. Um, so we're going to wrap it there. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, again, I will, in the when I do put up that uh, the server side part of this, I will, I will kind of update the description and kind of link between the two front end and back end uh, in case you are interested in, in that. Thanks for watching.